Welcome to Crook and Kipe Extra Innings is Welcome to Crook and Kipe Extra Innings is today the Giants continue their hot winning streak and have won six games in a row with back to back sweeps is today they swept the Pittsburgh Pirates. They trailed this game two to nothing, then found some way to win. They won today's game five to three. And man, I think Brandon Belt could have his first 20 home run season this year. What a game. Good game by Jeff Samarja today, allowing only. And you can follow me at Rob Iman at twitter.com. Oh, yeah, what a game by, by Samarja. Had another excellent outing today. Two earned runs and six innings pitched. Not the best start, but not the worst. And his ERA is down to 4.54, which is very passable and acceptable. Trevor Williams, not too bad of an outing for him for Pittsburgh. Two earned runs and six innings pitched. Allowed three hits. Struck out three. Uh, passable game, reward serviceable. But then the bullpen came in and blew the game for them. Watson allowed an earned run. And then Santana, Edgar Santana came and allowed two more earned runs. And that ended up being the nail in the coffin for the, for the Pirates. Former Giant Chris Stewart went 0 for 3 today. And he's below the Mendoza line at 194. And also... Andrew McCutcheon got a day off today. Jinyu Wong, Jinyu Wong, two for four today. I think we might have, we might, if Wong, if Wong continues this kind of kind of performance all season, and now with uh, Christian Arroyo on the disabled list, possibly for the rest of the season. This could be Wong's job to take over. Could he take it over here soon? Especially if Eduardo Nunez is traded before the deadline here. We'll see what happens. But I think we got ourselves a third baseman of the future, especially if Nunez is traded before the deadline. And if Wong does a good job, that could make, unfortunately, Christian Arroyo on the put be put on the trading block next year could become trade bait depending on what happens but Wong is I like what I saw of Wong today it was good two for four 333 batting average he's hitting a lot better than Ryder Jones hopefully tomorrow we can hopefully we'll get some good news about Eduardo Nunez tomorrow that he could be activated so yeah, and you know, Ryder Jones kind of got thrown into the Wolves early, by default, and we really didn't need to. He just got kind of got called up too too soon. Maybe some more seasoning in AAA will help Ryder Jones get better. But I also wish a speedy recovery to Christian Arroyo, who's going to probably miss the rest of the season on the disabled list, depending on how the healing goes and stuff. Maybe he goes plays a little bit of fall league. Who knows what happens with him? But not too bad of a day. Brandon Bell, I think he could be the. He's looking like this is going to be the year. Bell is going to hit twenty home runs. His the most home runs Bell has had in a year has been eighteen thus far. But he's on pace for his first twenty home run season. I'd like to see the batting average get up there a little bit more, but I, I'll take the 20 home runs. We finally – I like what the, the the power has finally come with Belt this year. I really like the power hitting. I just like to see more consistency at the plate with him. And Slater's starting to cool off a bit. It's okay. He'll bounce back at some point. But what defense by, by Belt and Slater today robbed two hits. That was some good – Good outfield, good defense by them both.
and just finding ways to win right now. This is how you get the, this is how you get the clubhouse happy. This is how you get a happy dugout. And this is really what the Giants need right now. It really does. It really helps. It makes the it makes it a lot happier in the clubhouse at this point. But next time we face Pittsburgh after the All Star break, the roster could look a bit different. Garrett Cole could be gone. Possibly Andrew McCutcheon. We'll see what kind of trades Pittsburgh makes before the deadline, as they're likely going to sell. I'll talk about that later on in the month. And also. I don't know. After this next, when we play them at home, that might be the last time we face the Pirates with Clint Hurdle as a manager as he's looking like he's going to be fired at the end of the season. And as they just look to rebuild and maybe start off, start over with a new voice in the dugout next season. We'll see how things go for him. All right, let's go around the league with other scores today. Oh, wait, before I go with other scores, let's do buyers or sellers today. Today's buyers or sellers team is the Atlanta Braves. As much as the Braves are wanting to buy at the deadline, I think they need to sell for one more year. I think they should cash in on Jamie on Jaime Garcia. He's pitched exceptionally well for the Braves. Chicago Cubs are going to be looking to I think want would like to have Jaime Garcia on the back end of that starting rotation. Another team that could be after the services of Jaime Garcia could be the Milwaukee Brewers as they're looking to add a, maybe a proven starter. And Jaime Garcia, with his experience with the, Car with the Cardinals and the, AL and the NL Central, I think those two NL Central teams could be after the services of Jaime Garcia before the trade deadline. They could also look to move Matt Adams and try to get back a few prospects for Matt Adams. And, you know, they could they could try to – I think Matt Kemp's contract is just too expensive for another team to take. And there's just not anywhere for Brandon Phillips to be traded to. There's just no team really needing second baseman at this time and point. But I think, but I think maybe – they got three young starters now. I think Tehran will come back next year. Newcomb's looking good. Nick Fultinowitz is – they got some. They got some solid pieces in the starting rotation. They just now need to look to purge R. A. Dickey at some point. And you know, I think the the, the future is starting to look bright in Atlanta. They just maybe need another year of selling to get more prospects. Then they can go after that big ace they they would love to desire for that starting rotation. But yeah, I think they need to sell for one more year before they start buying. All right, let's go around the league with the other scores today. The Patriots beat the Blue Jays 15-1. to Your winning pitcher was Drew Pomeranz. Your losing pitcher was Joe Biagini. Mookie Betts went four for six in this game. Hanley Ramirez went three for five in this game. Jackie Bradley Jr. went three for five. Zhu Wei Lin went three for five. And did Devin Marrero. And Mookie Betts had two home runs today in this game. And Ramirez had a home and Hanley had a home run in this game. And this was the first save for Fernando Abad. And Biagini allowed seven earned runs in five and a third innings pitched. Not a good day for Glenn Sparkman, allowing seven earned runs in one third innings pitched. Jeff Belivu allowed another earned run. Just not a good day for the for the Blue Jays, and it's like Toronto's end of the line for the Blue Jays at this point. 
The Cubs beat the Reds 6-2. to two. Your winning pitcher was Jake Arrieta. Your losing pitcher was Tim Adelman. Ian Happ went 3-4 for four for the Cubbies today, and so did Javi Baez went 3-4. for four. And this was a better one of Arietta's better performances of the season. Seven shutout innings today. Lowered his ERA to 4.33. But not a good day for Justin Grimm, who allowed two earned runs and one third inning pitched. And not a good day for Austin Bryce, allowing two earned runs and two innings pitched. The Phillies beat the Mets 7-1. to Your winning pitcher was Nick Pavetta. Your losing pitcher was Rafael Montero. And Daniel Nava went 3-for-3 three for 3-for-5 three for, the, three for, for the Phillies today. The Orioles beat the Rays 7-1. Your winning pitcher was Kevin Gaussman. Your losing pitcher was Alex Cobb. And Cobb allowed seven runs, six, earns, six earned, and six in the third innings pitched. And game's currently in progress right now. Rangers beat the White Sox 5-4, to four, are leading the White Sox 5-4. to four. The Marlins lead the Brewers 6-3 to three in the top of the eighth inning. The Astros lead the Yankees 8 to nothing in the top of the eighth inning. At the end of the eighth inning, the Royals lead the Twins 6-2. to two. At the bottom of the sixth inning, the Mariners lead the Angels 2 to nothing. At the end of the third inning, the Braves lead the A's on the other side of the bay 2 to nothing. The Rockies have a 1 nothing lead over the D-backs in the top of the in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Padres hold a 1 nothing lead over the LA Dodgers in the top of the second inning. And later tonight, the the Nationals will face off against the Cardinals on Sunday Night Baseball. And down on the farm right now, In the top of the fifth inning right now, the River Cats lead the Fresno Grizzlies in the Battle of 99, 2-1. And now the Giants will... We'll take. We'll have a day off tomorrow, and then head on the road to take on the Detroit Tigers for three games. And starting on the fourth of July, this will be a early ten ten game. Matt Cain will face off against Daniel Norris. On Wednesday's game, the Giants, Wednesday's probables are at 410 tie block against Michael Fulm, Fulmer. And Friday on getaway day, and this will be another morning game, so no show on July 6th. This Thursday will be Johnny Cueto against Anibal Sanchez. And right now, as in terms of the standings, 
the Red Sox have padded their lead to two and a half games over the, Yan over the Yankees. It could be three games after today at 47 and 35. The Indians hold a two and a half game lead over the Twins. But the Twins at this, at this point look like they're going to end up falling behind and end up being tied with the Royals for second place after today's game. And Houston continues to run away with the AL West. But New York holds the top is wild card number one. And it looks like Tampa Bay might be your wild card number two at this point at 43 and 41. Washington holds a seven and a half game lead over the Braves. Or the Braves, if they win today, they'll just be one game under 500, which may may tempt them to buy at the deadline if they think they got a chance at going after the Nationals. All right. And then the Brewers hold a two-and-a-half game lead over the Cubs at 44-39. And then the, the Dodgers hold a three and a half game lead over the D backs at three at 55 and 28. And the Rockies seven games back at 48 and 35. And Arizona and Colorado still hold, comfortably hold the two wild card slots in the NL. Oh, I will be back later tonight with Crew and Kai if they might be Giants. And the possible repercussions of the injury to Christian Arroyo and the suspension to Yoan Gregorio and how that could ram have ramifications as in terms of September call-ups. Thanks for tuning in. Together we're Giants. See you tonight. Later tonight.